Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike Kirkay from Scratch. Today, we're talking about the REN programming language. Well, you may have noticed over the last couple of weeks, I've talked about programming languages a little bit more than usual, and I'm actually finding there is a lot of interest in the topic. So I'm going to put together a playlist. I'll bring together all the stuff I've covered recently, such as uh, the beef language and the gravity language. And on top of that, we are be adding REN. And I'm going to be doing further videos going forward. So if you have programming language recommendations that are game development related, let me know. Now, if you were following along last week, we covered gravity. And gravity is uh, basically trying to be a better Lua. So basically take Lua and Swift, mash them together, but it's designed to be embedded in your project. And today, Ren, exact same deal. So today we're looking at Ren. It is a classy little scripting language. That is a bit of a pun there because it is a class-based language. So basically, if you wanted something lightweight and embeddable like Lua, but you would rather have classes, well, that's exactly what we've got going on here. So this is Ren. It is available at, come on, uh, Ren.io. I will, of course, drop all of the links down below later on. Uh, but if you're interested, this is your typical Ren code. If you've done any modern programming, like Java, C++, Hacks, Swift, etc., you're going to immediately recognize the code. It, it's pretty clean, straightforward. It's not a really hard one to learn, and typically that is the design goal behind most scripting languages. And again, this one is designed to be small. So here, see, uh, Ren is small. The VM implementation is under 4,000 semicolons. That's an interesting way of measuring things because a lot of people. Use use line of code. And that's a really stupid measurement because um, it kind of encourages people not to put uh, comments in. Uh, so in this particular case, you're saying the lines of code by actual terminated semicolon terminated C statements. That makes a little bit more sense. But you see here, uh, you skim the whole thing in the afternoon. It's small, but not dense. It's readable and lovingly commented. It is also fast. A single pass compiler to tight byte code and a compact object representation help run compete with other dynamic programming languages. So if you want to see some details, now programming language benchmarks are always grain of salt stuff, but they have some details here. Ren is class-based, so there are a lot of scripting languages out there, but they have unusual or non-existent object models. Ren places classes front and center. And you're going to find if you do any work ever in a complicated Lua framework, that framework will have invented its own class system. Lua uses tables and meta tables to do all their data storage. And so if you want something like heritage, you get into like table copying and hacking and so on. This is basically taking that whole aspect away. So if you want to have objects, and classes, you've got objects and classes. Ren is concurrent. It's got lightweight fibers, are core to the execution model, and let you organize your program into a flock of um, communicating coroutines. Now I'm going to pause and go slightly off topic for one second. If you're going to describe something ultimately as communicating coroutines, why don't you just call them coroutines? I, I get fibers, and fibers is a play on threads. It's a lightweight thread, and thus being fiber. And I know both terms are used uh, kind of almost interchangeably, but when you literally do so in your comment, maybe coroutine is the better way to go, especially because coroutine is already the established name from Lua. Uh, but anyways, that's just me going a little off topic. And Ren is a scripting language is intended for embedding in applications. It has no dependencies, a small standard library, um, and an easy to use C API. It compiles cleanly as C99 code or C98, C++ 98 or anything later. So basically, if you have a C or a C++ compiler that was built in this millennia, you should be able to get it going. We'll be back here in just a second, but let us move on. So the big thing here is Ren is designed to be embedded, just like Gravity was. So now we're gonna basically take a look at what's involved. Now there's gonna be more to it than that because Ren is dynamic, um, dynamically typed, C is not, and Ren is garbage collected, and C is not. So there's some management that needs to happen there in terms of uh, handling things and how things are done. But today we're going to look basically at the simplest example you could do, which is let's load up a Ren virtual machine and then run our code. And so in order to do that, we include the Ren uh, headers, then we create the virtual machine. So basically create a uh, new VM by calling w uh, or Ren new VM like so. And then you take that virtual machine and you pass it as a parameter into a call to Ren interpret, and you pass in the code that you want to run. So there you go, boom, you just ran uh, my module, which passed in the code basically to print out, I am running in a VM, and it's one line of code there. And then finally, when you are ultimately done, so there's more implementation details there. I I'm not dealing about persistence or, or threading or memory management or any of that stuff, but the baseline to embed, create, run, and destroy a, a Ren VM is basically three lines of code. And one of those is a pound include. So you see here, it is a pretty easy, uh, pretty th easy thing to, to work with here. Actually, I guess it was four lines of code with one 
pound include. There's also more details. I skimmed over some stuff. Uh, you know, again, implementing details, in, implementing details on memory management and so on. So do be aware there is other stuff out there. But as you can see, Ren is very simple to get it embedded and start passing Ren code into it. And there's more documentation here. The nice thing is the documentation is pretty thorough. So if you want to get started with Ren, it is a well-documented programming language. On that topic, it is also an open source programming language. And this is actually really important for a language like this because you're ultimately going to be probably embedding it in another project. So Ren on its own is kind of useless. You're not going to do full applications in Ren. Ren is designed to be embedded into another project. And this case, it is under the MIT license. The MIT license doesn't force you to open up your source code or anything like that. Basically, you absolve the developer of um, responsibility, you maintain their legal copyrights, and that's about the extent of what MIT asks of you. So if this code somehow causes your computer to burst into flames, not their fault. But other than that, you can do almost whatever you want with it. As you can see here by the commit, uh, it is very actively updated, um, so it, it, it's a well-supported, uh, constantly updated VM, which is definitely nice. Um, so that is Ren. It is completely open source. If you want to see a couple more examples, you can jump in here. There's an example directory here. So here is Ren code for creating a Mandelbrot set, which is kind of funny. I don't know about you, but for me, if code isn't now getting syntax highlights, uh, I find it really hard to read. It's just straight black and white code now. But here you can see a, a sample Mendelbrot program. Uh, here is the hello world of um, Ren. Pretty straightforward right there. And there's a couple of other examples to get you up and going. Uh, here we got one for creating a million fibers as an example. But as you can see, the code, if you've done any modern C++-ish style coding, it, it's going to, you're almost not going to have to learn it. It's almost immediately familiar, especially if you've already worked with a language with fibers or coroutines. It's all just going to, it's going to come pretty intuitive. It's a straightforward language for the most part. So that is Ren. Uh, back here, if we go back to the main page here, again, available at ren.io, um, you can grab a couple things that are interesting. First off, we've got uh, this guy right here. So we've got the ability to play it directly in your browser. So as you can see, just basically type your code in here. So there's your hello world. Click run. And then you see the output there. So it's gives you a good way to actually try out Ren, see if it's a language that you like. Uh, there's nothing, this isn't smart by any means. So we're getting no code completion or anything else. We're just getting basic syntax highlighting. Uh, also, we've got uh, guides here, programming guide on the syntax. The, the language itself is pretty straightforward. One thing I do like is it does have nested comments. This should be just a universal thing. I have no idea why C didn't allow uh, nested comments out of the block uh, for like a multi-line comment. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that's been a little frustrating. The other thing that's interesting is the list of reserved words. It's very terse. So we've got just break class construct else false for foreign if import in is null return static super this true var and while. And that is the extent of reserved words here. Um, the name and convention is pretty traditional. You know, once again, you start with a letter or an underscore. Um, new lines are meaningful here. They separate statements. Um, so unless it's a comment embedded within. Uh, you'll notice there are no semicolons here. The nice thing, again, with Ren, you've got pretty good um, documentation here. Also, you've got a lot of the things built in that you would expect. So you've got uh, maps in here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of about it. Again, you want to come back, learn a little bit more about performance. Once again, as I said to start the video, you, you take any kind of a benchmark with a grain of salt because they're actually here you can see. Even though most benchmarks aren't worth the pixels they're printed on, some people like them, so here we go. So even the uh, language developer admits that most benchmarks for programming languages are bunk. But here you can see some of the things that, uh, you know, measurements of how long it takes. And you're going to see, in some cases, um, jitted Lua is uh, faster. So they're, they're being upfront about that. But normal Lua is less than half the speed. So there's, you know, give and take. Some things are going to be better. Some things are going to be worse. But you can see compared to other programming languages, at least as far as these benchmarks go, uh, Ren seems to be pretty solid. If you want some details about why it's fast, there is more here. It's going beyond the scope of what I want to cover here. I'm mostly here just to introduce you to new concepts. You see here, there is a lot of technical depth about uh, how it went about doing things. Um, it also has a bit of a write-up about why he went and created Ren as opposed to just using an existing programming language out there. And part of it started from a book project he was working on, and it sort of turned into Ren. It, it's definitely an interesting uh, project, and I, I do recommend um, 
you check it out if you're looking for an embedded system. Now, is is there a reason to use this over, uh, say, gravity? Well, actually, no. Ren and gravity kind of solve the exact same problem, which is basically to make a version of Lua a light embedded language just with a more traditional programming model to like typical C, C++ style developers. And I think from what I have seen of Ren, it... Uh, it kind of cop it kind of manages that and if you look at again at the core functionality that's included the modulars and modules and such you've got things in here that you would expect ranges um we got string uh fiber class so on maps the, the kind of the typical stuff that you're going to need to deal with is already provided for you out of the box so it's an interesting project for sure if you are wanting to check that out again it is available at ren.io i will link all those things in the article down below and again i'm going to focus a little bit on uh, domain specific programming languages or game development focused programming languages on occasion here on the channel so if you have a recommendation of something along the lines of gravity ren beef uh do let me know and i will uh try to add it to the list and let me know what you think of Ren in general, and I will talk to you all later.